Celtics legend Kevin Garnett was officially named to the 2020 Basketball Hall of Fame. He joins Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Rudy Tomjanovich, and Tamika Catchings, and a bunch more. Probably the best uh, Basketball Hall of Fame class we've ever seen. Cedric Maxwell joins me, Nick Gelso, I am Josue Pavone. Welcome into the Garter Report. Fellas, it's official. KG will be enshrined in Springfield, Massachusetts. But uh, where does he rank amongst his, uh, his peers? Uh, alongside... Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan, Max. Let's start with you. Well, if you think about those three, I think Kevin Garnett is is third, wow. and that's really hard to say. But uh, to me, he, he he is because Kobe Bryant was probably and him and Tim Duncan kind of real close when you think about how they play. But Tim's, I think I'm going to give him the nod. Uh, you know, the big fundamental as Shaq used to like to talk about Tim Duncan, um, but. Again, it's not anything to be disappointed about. If you think about, I'm I'm in third place, or I might be in third place. I'm with Kobe, and I'm and I'm with Tim Duncan. Well, okay, that's not a bad place to be. Yeah, to me, it's it, if you're looking at it on championships, he's got to be in third place. But if you're looking at it on generational or from a standpoint of impact, I think Garnett almost is second place. You got to put Tim at the top, but if there's no Garnett, then Kobe maybe has to go to college, right? Because Garnett broke that barrier, and uh, he played. Yeah, am I right, Max? I mean, I see you nodding there. Impact, I mean, did break the barrier. Oh, impact. I think impact is a is a, a good thing when you think about. Well, if it hadn't been for Garnett, then where would Kobe come in? But yeah, but Moses Not Malone came straight out of high school. So well, you Moses you, did. He yeah, was the last Moses before out, yeah, Moses came out of high yeah. school, you know, before Garnett. So I, I still think that we kind of forget and say that, but I still look at KG with among those three, and I'm gonna give the other two a nod. Um, what I will say, and I've said this before, Kevin Garnett is the best all around player oh. ever to put on off the Celtic this uniform. Kills me when he <laughs> says this. Wow. What? This, what is, this kills me. That's quite a take. I'm, I'm well, guessing, uh, Nick, you disagree. You, you, you want to go with your boy Are you Larry? kidding me? Are you Larry? kidding me? We have fought this so many times. How could well, you Well, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Judge Wapner. Tell me what you got there. All right, <laughs> Doug Llewellyn. Let's talk about it. All right. It. Okay. No, I mean, seriously. Garnett was in Boston six years. I think his impact, his number deserves to be in the Raptors if you put it on uh, Red's criteria from how many years ago. But. Come on, man. Larry Bird, Bill. You're saying all around basketball player, right? All around basketball is, player. La, I'm sorry, Larry Bird is still the best all around basketball La, wait player. Minute, well, man, is Larry Bird Here in the same defense. defensively? He does it to you all the time, Joseph. Yeah, he does. I, I hear him Max. doing it to you all yeah. the time on the podcast. Happens I'll every say, week. No, Max, but I will say Kevin Garnett isn't even close to Larry Bird offensively. Oh no, no, that's that's not right. Kevin Garnett was 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 a stat. Actually, you look at his stats; probably has more points than Larry Joe Bird. And I think at the Wait, end of the years. day, well, I don't care. You just ask me. Look at his offensive numbers and what he's put up in Minnesota. <laughs> what he's put up, he's no slouch. Now, was he as good defensively as Bill Russell? No, no. he wasn't. But he's not far behind Bill Russell. Is he a better offensive player than Bill Russell? Yes. 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 And so he's a better defensive player than Larry Bird and not that far behind him offensively. I'll go one step further. I didn't play with these guys, Max. You're difficult to argue with. I'm with an MVP, but I'm going to say Kevin McHale was a better all-around player than Kevin Garnett. See, you no. just stole the thunder from my next question because I, I want to know, is, Ke- no. is KG the second best power forward of all time? No. I've always thought. But a lot of people don't say that. They say, well, wait a minute, who's the first best? People say Tim Duncan. It seems people like say that. They say, well, Kevin wait a minute, who's the first best? Think about, you know, you you, you go on, you think about Carl uh, Malone, the mailman. Oh, he wasn't on. a bad, he, he was one, he was having to be one of the best power forwards to play the game. I they agree talk, with that. They, 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 still talk, they still talk about Charles Barkley as a power forward playing the game. So, I, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys in there. And even if you talk about them in that way, you're not slapping anybody around because there were so many. They, they were so great. And it's a collection of those five guys. You wouldn't go wrong either way if you picked any of those guys to start your team around. Was Kevin McHale a good defender? All great defender. defender. Right? Great defender. Great defender. Rebounder. 
Good rebound. Was he one of the best offensive players in the low post he ever? He was a great offensive player. He could he couldn't pass the damn cheese. Okay, if you That's ask him, if you ask, if you ask him to pass, so yeah, you cannot tell. Yeah, was well, so you can't tell me about how great the guy is offensively if he couldn't pass the ball. Offense has to do with passing, shooting, doing all those things. We used to laugh all the time saying, "Don't pass Kevin McHale your baby," okay? Because he was going to be dropped. <laughs> He was gonna be dropped. <laughs> yeah, he, it wasn't coming back. Yeah, he, it wasn't coming back out. You know, he was, and 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 I can say this: you can't. He was the original black hole. All right. Aww. Once you know, once you throw the ball into him, it wasn't coming back out. Get the rebound. Yeah, why can't I say that? Danny says it all the time. They can't say that. Danny Ainge <laughs> calls him a black hole. Whoa! I mean, the black hole means you're in this outer space, a black hole. It's not. Is that no, a black thing? hole means that nothing escapes. So once he got the ball, it wasn't coming back out. Like so that's why I think that you, that's why I think that you, if you're 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 think about Kevin Garnett offensively and and Mikhail, two different players. Kevin was a better low post player. But I think Which you Kevin? look at Kevin, Kevin McHale was a better low post player than Garnett. But Garnett's overall skill set offensively, I don't even think. I Even if I look at Tim Duncan, you think about Kevin Garnett was a better and the way he played the game. And he was a better passer than Tim Duncan. Kevin Garnett was, was for a guy who was a seven-footer, was an unbelievable passer. Oh, I agree. I mean, he was, and he was there with Walton was a great passer. Yeah. Yeah, so it was uh, Shaq. Ooh, that that stiff Bill Walton that got <laughs> I got traded for. Oh, you, oh, you really you know want that one here? Okay. There? Wait, wait, there <laughs> you really want me to get all? going right here in my boudoir right now while I'm I'm having my right now I'm having my awakened snacks right now. This is what I'm having. <laughs> I have some soup and some chips. But this is what I do. This is how this is how good awakening is that we'll just eat chips while I'm going on the air. Hey, go for it. This is this is what we call Corona Casual. I mean, it is uh, become a, a home base. Like we, the studio is the bedroom now. I'm in my bedroom too. Uh, I don't know. I I, put, I could go so far as to say Kevin McHale is is right there with Kevin Garnett because he had a better he, low he, post game. He yes, he I'm agree with Garnett. you. Better better low post game than than. Kevin Kevin McHale had a better low post game, but Kevin Garn, but Kevin McHale wasn't the passer that Big Ticket was. Big Ticket was just he yeah. he just had an array of things offensively yeah. that you look at and going wow. I agree. This segment of the Guard Report is powered by Awaken 180 Weight Loss, just like Max is doing right now. You could take his lead. Don't go into hibernation mode and start packing on pounds. You can get. One-on-one coaching, access for over a thousand recipes, and the tools to know what to eat. You can set up your first consultation today at awaken180weightloss.com. That's awaken180weightloss.com. I love that Max is just rubbing Count while out. I go through that read. It's perfect. It's yeah. a great show. He, it's, he's, it's, during, it's during. It's like just like during the game broadcast. He's eating. Oh, wow. Radio. <laughs> <laughs> But it's actually go- it coincides with the sponsor. Like you the game broadcast like perfect. this. Hey, what what are you eating over there? <laughs> Potato chips. <laughs> what did you just? Did you burp? Hey, did you just burp? Yeah, I did. No, I was- no, no, no. Did you yawn? No, I think Randy actually asked him that once. Max, did you just yawn? But Max, so talking about Kevin McHale, he got a fine for. I don't think you were on the team, but he did get a fine for eating a hot dog on the bench. Do you remember hearing that yeah. in the early nineties? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that, that, that's all right. All right. Well, fellas, let's keep it KG. Uh, KG, of course, as we've already known for about, I don't know, about a month or two, that he will have his number retired by the Boston Celtics. Uh, Doc Rivers joined the Goodman and uh, Ryan podcast. Bob Ryan and, and, and Goodman got a chance to talk to him. And obviously the topic was brought up. And he says that he's hoping that he can uh, use this opportunity to see Ray Allen reunited with his uh, uh, former members of the Big Three and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. And he had this to say. This one I take on myself. Like, uh, I really, um, I failed with the Paul jersey retirement. You know, um, I really thought that Ray should have come to that. And, and I tried to get him to. And it just, he wanted to. Like, he, he was going to. And then he, 
He just did. All right. Well, gentlemen, what do you two think? I'll be one. You know, the first thing I'm going to say is uh, KG did an interview right after the Hall of Fame announcement was made. And he did talk about how joining up with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen meant a lot. He did mention Ray. So mm. I think that's a He's little bit more. there. Minutes after or hours after he found out he was officially inducted. Ray Allen, Ray Allen's name came out of his mouth. Maybe that's worth something. It's been more. It's been coming out more. He said in another a comment recently about Ray, and he put out a picture of him, Ray, and Paul on, I think, Instagram. So maybe it's loosening up. Matt, you're big on the Ray topic. Yeah, I, I am. I, 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 I'm one of those few people in the, the garden who probably think that thinks that uh, Ray, Ray Allen's jersey should be retired because it wasn't the big two. It was the big three. And to me, Dr. Privis says it's his fault. When it comes to Ray not showing up at Paul's thing, I, I, I can't buy that. You know, yeah. Ray, Ray is a grown-ass man. And, <laughs> and, you know, at the end of the day, if he's going to come, he's going to come. I'm one of his biggest, biggest fans. Matter of fact, when I was there uh, at Paul Pierce's, um, they had a dinner before, for him that um, before his uh, jersey was retired. And I was there, and I was one of the speakers I missed an opportunity because I wanted to tell him uh, in front of everybody, I wanted to say, Paul Pierce is the captain of this team. It's time for you to tell Ray Allen to come home. How would that have been received if he did that? that? I, I don't I don't know if it, how it would have been received, but it was just one of those things to me, again, where if you're the captain of this team and people look at you in that way, as a person who was, as a person who was kicked out the door, I felt the same way. Um, you know, it's like you you felt like you were part of that team, but almost people alienate you. Like I I I get so many I hear so many times about the big three, the original big three. Well, gentlemen, I hate to tell anybody this, but there was a big four. Um and I was that other guy. So if you want to talk about, you know, all those things, what do we what did they say? Are there four musketeers or are there three musketeers? Which one is it? And you know, and you hear people say, "Well, there actually was four, but nobody talks about that other fourth one." And I think that's what to Do me. Do you feel that way? Do you feel that way? Um, uh, yeah. Three years later. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I. It's it sometimes when I hear people talk about, "Oh my God, Larry and and Robert and Kevin, that's the greatest front line ever." Well, I played with those guys for almost six years. So I'm not included in the conversation, and it's it's a little um, it, it's a little hurtful thinking about that. But As Cedric Maxwell converts the foul shots and seals. You also, my teammates who played with me also knew my place and where I stood with them. So it doesn't bother me as much because of that. But it still is one of those things where I say, "Oh my God!" You hear people all, the greatest. Big three, that's the greatest front line to ever play together. Well, I played with those guys for five or six years, and I was the finals MVP. Mm-hmm. And I, I helped them win the 1984 championship with my uh, heroic seventh game. So let me, if I got a whistle here, something to, something to blow, damn, I, I feel like I'm blowing, am I blowing my own horn here? Hold on a you minute. deserve to, Max. I mean, I yeah, man, nothing wrong with that. I'm sorry. Watch out. Get the Seiko watch, man. Yeah, that's why. I, yeah, I get the I oh, get good. the MVP watch out. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Son of a Son of a Let's see what they gave me. Don't go there out on the no Don't go out no. on the limb, NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing hey, the thing. money's different now. <laughs> <laughs> the money's different now. You, you think LeBron got one of these? Let's Son of a watch the infamous. Don't. But it is it is equatable to Ray, isn't it? I mean, I do well, see the similarity. It's interesting because to hear Doc say this and tell that story about the whole Paul Pierce thing, I, I didn't know it was like that. I didn't know that he had agreed to do it. And then this is here, right? I mean, next up is what? Paul Pierce's induction, I'm assuming, next summer. And then after that, when's the next time these three have that opportunity to, to reunite? I think that's what everyone wants to see. That's what Doc wants to see. I think everyone sort of just wants to see these three guys back together again, you know, photographed mm-hmm. and saying, look, everything is good. We, we put it. It's water under the bridge at this point. We won a championship in 2008. Nothing's going to take that away from us. This is a bond between the three of us forever. That's what Doc wants to see more than anything. I mean, Nick, you talk about that. I think that you could go even further. It's like 
when I first came back to the garden uh, mm-hmm. on Larry Bird's um, retirement my favorite all time and, and people were like, and I remember uh, Costas turned to me and said, uh, Max, um, how does it feel say, to be back in the Boston Garden? How does it feel to be back in the Boston Max, Garden? How does it feel to be back at the Boston Garden? And everybody around, and I was maybe as blown away as I've, as everybody in the entire building stood up, clapped, gave For me an ovation. Seven minutes. My my mm-hmm. teammates around me were clapping. It was um, that was that was really a special moment. But it showed me how I was respected by the fans and how I was respected by the players. And that to me was a tremendous honor. And I just hope Ray gets the same thing because that's why I feel my story is tied oh, it is. so close to his. And that's why I think I am his biggest champion when it comes to having his jersey retired. I'll ask you a question, Nick. From the time I played my last game in Boston, wearing the number 31, did I, did I get any better or something? This is his favorite, right? Joe? Yeah, right. Did, no, did, did I, did I get any No rebounds. I mean, oh, did I no. did I do no. anything else that that was a difference between retiring my jersey? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, what did you? Were you? Ner- I mean, just wait, not to throw your steal your thunder here. I got I got to ask this question. I listen to your. No, show, go ahead, man. What you got? I edited it, and I'm always like, ask him this. So, were you nervous that night? A bird's retired uh, jersey retirement. I mean, you got to get up there talking. He was afraid of to hear the boo birds. The boo birds might come out. You don't know. No, no, I didn't. I, again, I've, I've said this story before. When you are, when they trade you away, almost any player who gets traded away, you're going to get probably an ovation coming back. It's the guys like Ray who decide to leave the team. And it's like, this is what I'm, I'm comparing right now. When Brady finally comes back here to play his first game, He'll get he, decide, he decided to leave. But I, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be any boo birds. I know a couple the the Brady bunch, uh, Felger and Maz won't be booing. They'll be like, "Yeah, there's something to talk about." But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see the similarities a lot. I mean, I I really Debbie, you ever thought about reaching out to Ray and just being like, "Dude," because it seems like at this point, yes, KG stubborn. I mean, just wait your opinion too, because you're you know this team so well. It seems like KG is stubborn. Paul certainly not stubborn. But it seems like Ray might be like digging. Oh, well, man, wait, wait, where, where's Rondo in the mix of this? I think Rondo is a, a big <laughs> part of the equation, but when it really comes down to it, it's those three. And it, he's it really mad it, at it, Ray it is, Rondo. Yeah, it really is. But you, I've heard Ray, I've heard Rondo from time to time, kind of, oh, yeah. you know, throw throw <laughs> salt at at, um, at Ray. But oh, uh, Ray Allen went through so much during his career here. And that's why I'm his biggest champion. How many times did the Celtics try to trade him? Every year. Except, except for the first year. They didn't try to trade him the first year. You know what everybody does? In the first two that? years of just trying to move. You know what they always forget? <clears throat> that the man stayed up all night. His kid was born with diabetes. He flew to L.A. the game, the, the day of the 20-some point comeback, and it was him that spurred the comeback, and no yeah. one talks about it. That drives me crazy. He hit the Crazy. final dagger too, the layup, the reverse. I'll never forget that. Yeah. And he was the and Doc talks about it in uh, Doc says that's Doc says Ray was an offense all in of himself because mm-hmm. of the movement. I would think like Hondo and, but the thing is he talks about that shot prior to the the shot for the Miami Heat. That was the biggest shot in finals history, maybe right. So no one talks about it. And I, I, I think it's really a disservice to a guy who was runner-up for finals MVP in that series. Well, and here's struggling. the thing. Yeah, I mean, the thing you talk about, yeah, the guys he had to guard with Kobe Bryant and those guys, I think he had to guard the toughest guy almost every night. So we don't look at Ray as a defender, but Ray did a great job defending the basketball. To me, is Ray Allen the Hall of Famer? Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Oh, oh absolutely. So, Let me ask you two. So if he's a... If he, Sorry, not to cut you off real quick. Uh, I just want to ask you two this quick question before I forget. Um, do you do either one of you think that Ray Allen winning a championship with LeBron James, their arch enemy in Miami with the Heat, does that make things worse for, for, for that relationship? Does KG think to himself maybe or, or would KG have forgiven him at this point 
if he hadn't won that title, if the one and only title he had ever received in the NBA was with the Celtics, would things be different? I mean, to win a win a title with LeBron and the guy who is hated, who's been a thorn in the Celtics side more than anybody else, that would have to play it. It had to come into play. Right. Uh, he hit the, the shot. That, He's the reason. The fact that won, you, the, the mm-hmm. fact that you went to Miami and you were that guy, uh, the Celtics said they wanted him back. How bad did they want him back? Did I think you that. offer him that kind of money to come back? Well, he took less money, Max, and he denied a no trade clause from Danny, which was a very undanny like thing to offer him. So I think well, this, that's where Ray Ray goes. Well, this was him. this was also um, after the Celtics had signed Jason Terry and Cordy Lee. So I don't know if well, and Rondo was was really really uh, raw Ron for Avery Bradley to start. I mean, there's so much to that. I think for me, it was heartbreaking when Ray left, but I understood it. I, I just wait. How many years, right? We've known each other. I've always stuck up for Ray. The only yeah. thing I think that is not defensible is not showing up to Paul Pierce's jersey retirement. That was his oppor- That was his max moment. That was his opportunity, like Max had in '91 or '93 or whatever it was. 93. Well, who knows, guys? Maybe we'll see it uh, when they when they put number five up there. You know, because I, like I said, you know, he's running out of chances here. This is this is it. You know, at this point, I hope he shows yeah. up at the Hall of Fame. Who's gonna? I mean, who is, I, I, who's I think gonna, you. I think that really is true. He needs to, if you're trying to, and and I'll tell you as a player like that, when you feel like you're kind of cast away, you just don't feel like you want to come back. Mm-hmm. I, that was the last thing I'd ever, I remember saying to my wife at that time, I'm said, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back. Not the way these people treated me at the end of my, end of my days there. And um, I think that, that's why, again, I am such a champion for Ray because I feel like I walked in those footsteps that I want him to kind of follow in of um, just having forgiveness and letting it all go. You let you you let it all go. You get back here, and if there's any boo birds for Ray, you know That's what? I'll true. I'll go up and I'll go up and I'll punch him out. Okay? That's what I'll do. <laughs> Please shut up! Damn mouth! Shut your mouth, you! Shut your mouth! Listen, when you come back as a Clipper, did you get cheered? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ray did not. I, got I mean, my, there was yeah. a lot of boo birds. But but I, I keep saying the whole thing. You when you get traded away, I if Ray that. had got traded to Miami, well, no, he Max. Got, he also didn't sign with the Los Angeles Lakers. So let's well, say, I'm just that's saying that's 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 he had point. look. If he had got traded to Miami, I think the fans would have, again, they would have embraced him a lot more than the fact that he decided to leave to go to Miami. That's why I am so interested, and I know it's going to happen, but when Brady finally comes back to oh, he's gonna get play, he's going to get a tremendous ovation. Mm-hmm. Very seldom we've seen players who leave teams via their way that they come back to an organization and they get cheered. I know there's several Red Sox who left going to the Yankees. Oh. Came back here. Boggs, didn't he? He got booed. Johnny Damon got booed. I mean, that these are great. guys who played their butts off and, uh, you know, because they decided to go to another team and happen to be your opposing guy. That, Not uh, people only that, it. Max. Brady, and I, I'm no NFL guy, but d- didn't Brady uh, really – push for the future of the franchise to be traded away didn't he kind of make that happen so really not only did he he left the team with his replacement gone because he insisted upon it to my knowledge i mean i don't want to talk out of turn well well look here's the thing belichick controlled all that belichick no, he went to yeah but he went over his head he went to crap belichick controlled the fact of of if jimmy was going to leave belichick controlled that I don't think Bob Kraft was going to say, look, I, I think Brady is probably looking behind him. But, again, that happens when you have a great player. Sure. I had a great player playing. Look, I had a great player playing behind me in Kevin yeah. McHale. Most people won't realize the fact that I'm saying, what, what do you mean? Max, you, you didn't start with the yeah. Celtics. No, you didn't, you didn't start for eight years with the Celtics. No, you, no, yeah, I did. Kevin McHale came off the bench behind me. So, a lot of people will tell me today, oh yeah, you were the you were the sixth man. No, no, I wasn't. 
Or, or for about fifteen the minutes, these things. You were the guy. You were the guy with the towel in his hand. No, that, that would be the wrong that. black person. That was Mac- called Mac- ML call. So I mean, I get that all the time. It's like, dude, how can I be waving at the same time guarding James Worthy? <laughs> I'll ass. tell you who knows. I'll tell you who knows you. You aren't ML. Are the Houston Rockets and the Los Angeles Lakers? They know you're not ML. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think I think they know. I think they gotta say or or the people in Philadelphia will tell oh. you I'm not ML, okay? <laughs> or is. or New York or there's a <laughs> bunch of cities who will tell you that Seattle? you know who I was. Seattle against Tom you don't, they would tell you I don't know if you don't know you better ask somebody. <laughs> Seattle against Tom Chambers, that was a that was a bloodbath that particular night. Yeah, he remembers Tom that Chambers. Story. Joe Sway, Tom Chambers came to Boston and scored. Maybe we beat them by about 15, but he goes into the locker room after the game. Good play. And he's talking to these reporters, telling them that, uh, yeah, I really played well against Maxwell. I wait until we got to Seattle. And I saw him again. I had 29 points, like 15 rebounds in the third quarter before I got tossed out of the game being too excited with two technicals. <laughs> what did you say to him? The reporter came up with me, nothing. I didn't say anything. I got a, a technical for, for a guy like flopped in front of me, got a technical. Then I was shooting free throws and I bounced the ball real hard. It came out of my hand when I missed it. And they gave me a technical for that. And I got thrown out of the game. Who was the but, ref? The reporter came strong? to me after the game and said, so, what what did you what did you do to Tom Chambers? I said, like Pac Man. <laughs> <I hit them up. laughs> they went and said they talked to Chambers after the game. So hey hey, you got anything to say? No, I nope. I, I ain't say anything to him. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I told hey guys, if you don't know, you better ask somebody when it comes to me. Let me tell you, Joseph Just- Tom Chambers is a good player, man. He was a good donker. He really athletic guy. Really good. Max School. Oh, I see him. Well, got, do, you, do you want? There's a guy named James Worthy. Really oh. good, good dunker. Yeah. Big James. Choked in front. Choked in front. Of, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me Big see if I can do this. I, I'm not sure if it's gonna work out with me having a beard or not, but yeah. Big, Big James. Choke. No, it was, it was little he game James you. at that time. Was he it? Was it? Big you. Game. It was little game. Uh, what don't happened? worry. The, the feeling is beautiful. Okay. He missed the free throw. Well, he missed, That's what happened. He missed the free throw. He missed the critical free throw in the fourth quarter. And I'm like the third the third person right in front of me. He missed the free throw. And as soon as he missed it, I walked across the lane. I say, I gave him the choke sign. And the fans start booing me. I'm like, well, all the dude had to do was make the damn shot. <laughs> and they're, they're booing me. Why, why are you booing me? And then he gets on. I love this. He gets on ESPN 30 for 30. He talks mm-hmm. about that particular moment, and he talks about how he missed the free throw, how I gave him the choke sign. He said, I missed the free throw. And then while I was walking, then I had to deal with that asshole. That asshole. <laughs> I love that part. That's great. That part's great. And then Magic missed the I love that. Throw. I love it, big game. I uh, love it, little game, James. He got his revenge, though. He did. He got his revenge, James. All right, folks, I, get revenge. I, wasn't, I wasn't there to get revenge. There's a good one. I like that. Okay. All right. This segment of the Gar Report is powered by Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Do not go into hibernation mode and pack on pounds. Get one-on-one coaching, access to over 1,000 recipes, and the tools you need to know to know what to eat. You can set up your first consultation today at Awaken180WeightLoss.com. That's Awaken180WeightLoss.com. There Man, you go. Look at that. that. Look, at, look at this stuff right here. This is this right here. This is the Move salad dressing. Way. This is the salad dressing that you gave me to have. And so yeah. this stuff really is good on your salads. So, gentlemen, ladies, whoever you are, if you're out there trying to lose weight, look at my face now. Probably Wait, about 15 pounds lighter. Because I've been on this diet or this. No, I can't say it's a diet. I say it's a change of life. That's what we'll call it. It's a change of lifestyle. And it it got me away from sugar. It got me away from a lot of things I've been eating. And they give you just an assortment of snacks and goodies that are are going to have you, uh, you know, doing the right thing. 
Max, what are you a romaine or a uh, field greens? Ro uh, uh, I'll say since you were a chef, I do romaine and spinach together. I like that. Yeah, yeah. romaine, yeah, romaine, spinach, carrots, cucumbers, uh, mushrooms, a few bacon bits, and some of this salad dressing. Bacon bits. You bacon. bacon. You're allowed to have bacon in, in really? Uh, yeah, they let you have you can have a meat. Okay. So don't don't worry about that. I got it. There you go. I'm gonna get on this one going 180. All right, fellas. Uh Celtics All Star Jason Tatum was on with uh Jeff Goodman on his podcast, the Good and Plenty yeah, Podcast. Week. Here on the CLNS yeah. Media Network. Um, he says that he hasn't touched a basketball throughout this entire uh, break from the NBA. Guys, does that worry you two moving forward? Good this from Jason for Tatum's him. perspective. I'm talking about as the NBA as a whole. Are we going to no, see this thing No, no, back? no. No. Good for him. And the reason I say good for him because you start looking at all the games he's played over the years. You know, going to, you know, in the middle of the summer, playing in all these different games, the all-star games. I think for him, it's an opportunity to get away from the game, just his battery, and when you come in as a young player, he's only, what, 21, 22. It's not going to yeah. affect him like with Kimba, uh, Kimba or somebody. He can roll up out of bed and probably play 35 minutes in a game. He'd be winded, but he could probably play 35 minutes in the game compared to an older player that needs yeah. that leaves a lot more reps. That brings up a good point. Gordon Hayward, who was up and down but was on a good roll there towards the end, He's got to be playing, man. At his age and with the the, the injuries he's had, right? He's got to be playing. Well, Nick, oh, Nick, here's the thing everybody says. I, I think that they're still probably getting one-on-one -on -one training. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about how these guys, they have enough money that most of them have gyms in their yeah. house. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about them getting to a facility trying to work out like some of us still so be uh so I, I think they'll still have they'll still be in decent shape and not basketball shape but decent shape and it'll probably take them maybe a week or so maybe to get back uh rounded into some playing shape right because max I, I, the way i look at it is five on five you, you just can't get that kind of reps without playing five on five right there's no way to duplicate that right well you can't get the timing you can't get the timing of a game. You can be like I could get somebody who is a, a marathon runner. I get the greatest marathon runner. I put him on the court and in the NBA game. In five minutes, he is about to die because it's a different skill set. Marathon runners, they just run, 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 run. But when you change directions and, and sprint and change directions, that is the difference. Like, you know, only people I know would probably be considered like that to me would probably be soccer players who change directions and run back and forth. And even with them, you know, you have some guys who are, who will run to half and then they'll stop. Well, basketball players, they run back and forth when you're in a game side to side. There are no athletes in the world who are like basketball players. Mm, you know, I uh, said it. Yeah, I did say it. No, There's I'm no with you on that. Athletes I agree. Athletes in the world like basketball players. I agree, man. A lot of people like the other about a month ago they were sitting downstairs downstairs in the the restaurant that I I go to used to. Uh, Which is it's weird, right? But they were seeing hockey players. No, you can't say hockey. Hockey. I mean, and listen, your calves, your feet, your legs have to be very much. in listen, I can't. I cannot skate, and Me I cannot either. play basketball right now either. I'm not in shape. So I'm not criticizing, but hockey players are not on the same level as basketball. No, players. not even, not even close when it comes to you know using those skill sets of running up and down the floor because players are going faster. Even on the skates, you you you're not going as fast as your legs because you get a chance to to push off on those skates and you're able to glide a little bit with your legs. You're using and churning the whole time in the NBA game, going side side to side. And what you have in the, in hockey sometimes, to me, I think, are shifts where you have certain players play at certain times. You mm -hmm. might have. Let's talk about LeBron James. The time he played for two forty eight minute games against the Celtics in the playoffs a couple of years ago, that to me was unbelievable. Yeah. 
when you yeah, think your about day, where they used he to do that all the time, Max, in your day. They did. I mean, Bird used to play 48-minute games in 87. Get the 86. hell out of here. He no, did not. He look did not. Right, right I want now. you to go get box scores. I mean, you are the biggest yeah, but Larry Max, Bird. This is Nick we're talking about. Exactly. You know, he, he would say Larry Bird walked across the Charles River, man. He, 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 it probably the story, that probably is true. He's believing it. No, you know, Larry, I mean, honestly, I mean, I understand he's he's a recluse and everything. He doesn't like to leave Indiana. But the fact that he doesn't embrace Boston the the way some others do it, I still love Larry. I mean, how about when he was at the Pacers series two years ago? I was crying. He he was in the same building. Me, he is the, (laughs) to me, he's he's one of the greatest players ever to play the game. And I'll say that over and over again to anybody who wants to hear it. So people say, oh, you kick it, Larry, because no, I don't kick it, Larry. He's a, he's one of the greatest players ever to play the game. And I was one of the first pros ever to play against Larry Bird. So I don't want to hear nobody telling me how, oh, you kicked it, Larry. You No, Larry Bird, he showed a brother because I thought it was a black game, Nick. I looked at it as a black game when I played against Larry Bird, and I remember him stepping on the court <laughs> yeah, and for the first time, and I gave him the slow clap. Back. I gave him the slow clap. Oh. I was like, okay, okay, here he comes, a great white hope coming on the floor. We went through a practice that day, and yeah. I'm part of Larry Bird, and he is raining jump shots on, on me. And I remember getting back to the locker room and getting out. I scored on him, obviously. But I remember obviously. getting back. I, yeah, I was obviously. Yeah, I was averaging. I, I, I was a machine. Twenty back. a game, right? I was a, I was a machine. But I remember getting to the first black person I could see. I didn't care if it was a janitor. I don't care who it was who at was that it? time. And I said, you and know what? Was it? That freaking white guy can play. And it was the other f bomb that I threw out. So <laughs> I will max no well, question he, uh, about his ability as a player and who he was. So. I want to dispel that rumor right now about me disliking Larry or me no. being jealous of Larry Bird because I've heard that from so many people. If I ever say that somebody maybe was possibly better than Larry, it's like I'm kicking at Larry. I'm not. He is one of the guys. I think that Larry I mean, didn't make it under your, uh, your, your Boston Mount Rushmore list, man. So how come Larry didn't make uh, well, it did we, podcast? Well, on your Boston Mount Rushmore list, what did we have then? We had we had Bobby we had Orr. Bill Russell, Bob, Bill Russell oh, Bobby, Bobby Orr. Number one. Uh huh. I think Larry Bird. Larry Bird did make my list, didn't he? No, you had Russell. No, he did not. You had um, Tom Brady, uh-huh. and Williams, Roberts. Bobby Orr. I don't know about that. I don't know about you that Bobby we have Orr. Tape, Max. Well, <laughs> it's hey. on your podcast. It's on your podcast, Stop. bro. Donald Trump does it all the time. He doesn't <laughs> care about fake names. <laughs> you think I care about you think I care about the tape and I can't, I can't change it? Wait a minute. Uh, it's no. That sharpie. It's, it's a, a sharpie then. You know what? Let me look at, I'm going to look at both of you guys right now. Watch out. Both of you. Fake news. Fake news. Fake, fake news. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. Fake news. Yeah, fake news. Yeah, yeah. No, I am going to say something. I think because you're one of the few people in the world that will actually say something not uber positive about Larry all the time. You don't hear any criticism at all, ever. I mean, Arsenio Hall said it best. Larry Bird could be injured and someone can make an amazing shot and the announcer would say, Larry Bird did that. Larry Bird, that's Larry Bird's <laughs> passing. Larry Bird, he's the greatest. Yeah, and Nate, anyway, that's my I'm favorite sure documentary, Bird, man. That's my favorite sports documentary. Which one is it? Is that uh, 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 Quartzman? Was it the H- HBO one? Rivals, yeah, yeah. Rivals. yeah courtship of Rivals. Courtship I mean, of Rivals. Yeah. Larry Bird, yeah, Larry that, Bird that, made that, that shot. Larry, Larry Bird did that. That's how Larry Bird did it. Yeah, that that's what Larry I see the also. He's on the bench. Uh, <laughs> and, it's, on it's, and you know, and it's not. I, I guess I, I'm. I'm gonna say this again. What have I really said that has been negative about oh, Larry? I don't know. It's not negative, but you're criti- you're critical. No, no, no not critical it's, at all. It's, no, no, there's there, you're, you're not, I'm not criticizing Larry if I say that Kevin Garnett was a better all around player. I'm not criticizing Larry. That's just a fact. That's all it is. But I would say Nobody, you're the first person I've ever heard say that. Nobody, you know nobody, <laughs> no, nobody's being nobody's being critical of him. I, you know, am I saying that he wasn't a great player? 
I, the, it was it a surprise that we used to laugh about this all the time. You talk to Kevin McHale about it. We used to laugh all the time because Larry Bird will be second all defensive team. And I look at Kevin, he look at me, we go, what the hell? Wait a minute. Didn't I, didn't I guard my man and I get screamed at because I wasn't helping Larry out at the same time? <laughs> Kevin, McHale will, Kevin McHale will back me up on this a thousand percent, Nick. A thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, but Nick, like Larry, if Larry Bird was you can laugh where you want to, I'm telling you, Kevin McHale will back me up on it. You <laughs> show you Kevin McHale, the, you, you, you show Kevin McHale this way. And he will bust out laughing. I guarantee. Well, would he publicly say it, like you do? Would he publicly say what? I guarded Larry's man and my man, and Larry's second, <laughs> second team all defense. We would. Well, he that, might not say that, but but he would. He would he laugh at the fact that we would look at each other and all defensive team. Larry was always second all defensive I know. team, and we would look at. Each other. You, let me use it the way I said. You got to be shitting me, all right? You have got to be shitting <laughs> up here. <laughs> yeah. But that's the difference. Yeah, McHale wouldn't say it to the media. He wouldn't say it on his podcast. I you guarantee do. you. I tell you what. You get him on a podcast. We got to get no. We get him on our podcast. We'll, we'll, get on your we'll podcast. talk about that. We'll you get him on our podcast. On our podcast, we'll get him on our podcast, and and you let you just play that particular clip that I have right now of me saying that, and I guarantee you, he will bust out laugh. He'll go, God Almighty, Max, I can't believe that you, <laughs> but, but it's true. <laughs> you look like him even when you do that. So wait a minute, Max. It's like. Almighty. the... This is like That's the exactly catch what he was on Max today. This is the gotcha moment because I have the box score here <laughs> from 1987, Bucks Celtics. Not only did Bird play 48 minutes, Parrish logged 42 on an injured ankle. McHale had a broken ankle and logged 42. Now, what was Casey Jones thinking? Uh, DJ had 42 minutes, and Danny, the youngest guy, had 36 minutes. Where is the logic in that? The bench... The bench, the, the most person off the Nick, bench was 15, yeah, Nick, 15. Everybody Nick, else you can be, everybody can get a everybody can get a you know a, a blind squirrel can get a nut every now and then. For the most <laughs> part, Larry did not play forty eight minutes. I can I can tell you that as a yeah, as a guy there. who sat over there because we had Scott Webman who came off the bench who subbed him. He was I was subbing, so he was there were that that year you're talking about was KC was, was just throwing fox to the wind. He was throwing caution to the wind, and they did not have they did not have a bench because uh, they had a guy named yeah, Dead no Fred bench. Roberts who was there who Where was wearing the number thirty one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This segment question. of the guard report. Maybe, is maybe you should go further. Maybe you should go further, Nick, and go back and look at the people who wore the number thirty one. Maybe that's Mikey what you Moore. should do. The last person, yeah, Mikey Moore wore that number. He was the last one. I said. I That's just it. damn. <laughs> this segment of the guard report is brought to you by Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Do not go into hibernation mode and pack on the pounds. Get one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, access to over a thousand recipes, and the tools you need and how to eat. Go to awaken180weightloss.com to set up your first consultation today. That's awaken180weightloss. Dot com for plenty of more coverage and content. You know where to go. CLNS Media here on YouTube. That's right, guys. If I don't cut this off, we'll go for another hour. Or go to CLNSmedia.com for my oh man, YouTube. For my guests, my two favorite people to talk NBA hoops with, of course, uh, Dick Gelso, Cedric Maxwell. I am Josue Pavone. Until next time, guys, stay safe out there.